<laughs> good morning, good afternoon and goodbye. Hi, it's Susan at Seaside Stitches and welcome to my channel. Thanks ever so much for watching. Um, I'll put in a little bit of me in this blouse, which I really love. I had some quite um, baggy fitting issues with the back and although I thought I would just end up just putting two ties in the back I didn't do that I undid the seams I took the sleeves out again I cut the back into a size 12 back bodice apart from the um, shoulder seams and the collar obviously so but I did trim the shoulders back and front really to make sure I didn't have such a, a wide a, a vast I can't express it really but anyway I did that and it worked and um, it shows on the photographs that it worked and it's so much more more like a normal blouse top and I really like it I feel like I've done it justice the fabrics done it justice the pattern it's the new look 6707 anyway that's just my introduction from stuff that's not been finished before or that I've not had time to share with you so happy um, Friday sews something like it must be the 23rd of June I think and yes so I think in the last video which was mostly about pattern emporium take the chance dress that I made in some well beautiful fabric anyway I can pop a picture in a white background multi-coloured dress with tears a, a kind of a camp collar button top button bodice and then a plain skirt in tears in three I chose to do it in three tears and um, I did make reference at the end of that video I think that behind me was some kind of bonkers fabric and here I am with the bonkers fabric to which I said if I made a take the chance dress with it it may be just a bit too over the top well this is me about to finish putting the collar on at the neck and I have the tears cut out at the side of me so yes this is going to be another take the chance dress and hopefully I'll be able to take it on holiday a bit later on in the year so whoops that's a needle because I'm just I've hand tacked or basted the collar to the neckline just to make sure it doesn't move now it's very hot it's been very hot over the last few days and a week before and um, yes anyway so with having been by the seaside not right on the sea but we have seagulls screeching and shouting to each other and um, children playing out and wind wafting when it's wafting so I've had to shut the window and I've now got the heat from the ring light I did have um, a cold fan a cold air fan I can't have that on because you won't be able to hear me so anyway um, and I'm locked in here with lights on that are causing warmth anyway it's lovely to be here and explain something of my journey this week my journey this week really has just been um, Alan has still got the radiator off and he, he had to redo one of the brackets and really we're waiting for a friend or a relative to come and help us take the old radiator downstairs and bring the new radiator upstairs with us because they're very heavy and um, and we're very old you know we're cracking on now um, so yeah so I, the week before I'd had a lovely time at a, um, a surprise party for a friend that I've known since we were 11 we were in the same junior class but really weren't aware of each other in that final year before we moved to high school but when we moved to well it was secondary school then when we moved to secondary school um, my mum and dad thought it would be marvellous to take us to Butlins and 
they chose the last week, the, the first week of term, which really was because Butlins, after, this, uh, after the um, season, it was much cheaper and that's all we could afford, so that's when we went. But that meant when I started on my first week at high school, everyone else had been in there and made, made the connections and their friends in the first week. And I just happened to have, there just happened to be a seat next to Lynn at the front and the teachers suggested I sit with her. And yeah, here we are, 50 something. Well, she was 70, so we were 11 at the time. Yeah, I'm not even going into how much <laughs> what that is. Um, but I follow her in a couple of months to my 70th as well. But it was really lovely because uh, she'd moved and uh, she'd got a different set of friends and her family had, and we are the godparents to her eldest son and he was so lovely so lovely with us and it was him and his girlfriend who had organised it it wasn't um, kind of a party where it was booked or anything it was a really nice little venue where we could just um, just in a relaxed setting have a drink have something to eat if we wanted to or just chit chat and it was really nice it was just nice to catch up and nice to um, see her in her newer life and um, and all and how well she was thought of by these newer newer friends I'm talking new as in the last 15 years or something but yeah it was very nice and um, yeah it was quite a boost and a war my take the chance dress and I drove all the way, uh, I, I drove for an hour, sat in it, I sat in it in the sun, shaded in the sun, um, for I don't know a couple of hours, two and a half hours and then we dro I drove back and it does not look like it's all screwed up, it has worn very well in terms of creasing because that's one of my things why I don't really use woven very often. Um, so yes, and because it is such a lovely make and I'm almost a convert now to something a little oversized as long as I've got it on my own terms and it's kind of, um, is it empire, empire line waist? It, I need it not to be on my natural waist and then have gathers and um, what was saying? Oh yes, so I'd, I'd taken it up a little bit you could have it at any level you wanted but I just put it at the regular length which meant it was a bit more above about two inches above my natural waist or a little bit more and I had um, waist ties on so I can have it looser if I want a bit more air when I'm not really feeling kind of um, the need for a more structured garment so it was lovely I really enjoyed it and it kind of also brought a bit of joy to the I don't know energy of the setting so that was lovely and there was someone else who Janice who she's known like I don't know since she was about 20 ish or something like that so her and her husband and her partner they used to go out together um, like we did but we'd moved away around that time anyway um, so we would go over, go out and stay at theirs or go over and stay at my whatever. But they were regular kind of friends who would go to Manchester or here, everywhere, whatever. So it was lovely that she could come as well. We were kind of blasts from the past. But it was so nice, it was really good. So anyway. Um, yeah, so it's just been, and, and it was a bit of an action-packed week that week, so... I've just really caught up with bits of things and sewing and I did put on the back. I had, um, is it a forget-me-not patterns? Oh, I can't remember the damn name of the thing. I think it's a Vera top, but then I say, no, it's not. It's just such a thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. For So Frugal 23 and it had bishop sleeves and a long cuff. And I'd added, for some unknown reason, I'd added four inches to the length. I know I add length because I've got gorilla length arms, but I went a bit over the top with that. And so I'd, I've taken the cuff off and I've regathered, but I haven't attached it yet. So that's one thing to, to be 
finishing in this next week or so. Uh, that's a lilac one. And I did a blue one, that, a really lovely t-shirt, a deer and doe plantain tea that I'd never done before. And it, it, I just used it straight out of the packet. Well, it was a PDF, but if you know what I mean, I didn't do any alterations to that. And I just made it in whatever size I made it in. There's, that's um, logged on one of the Friday sews that was related to the sew frugal. And I just made that, but um, uh, my friend had uh, really liked it when she'd seen it on on my, um, excuse me, on one of my blogs. And she said, and I said I would make her one if she wanted. And um, I, so I took it at the end of that week just to see what size I'd need to make her. But I needed to send off the fabric to Jenny Stitches. It was... Um, Cotton jersey, but with 5% lycra or spandex or whatever you'd call it. And, um, but she tried it on and it was just perfect on her. So I said if she wanted it, she could have that one. I hadn't worn it except for those photos. She could have that one and I would make myself another one. Well, at this point, I still haven't sent for the fabric. So, yes, I will be making another of those. It, it was just an easy... Um, quite a relaxed fit. I do quite like, as as you know, if you've ever watched me before, and thank you for coming back if you've been here before, and thank you for watching if you haven't been before. But, um, yeah, it was just a comfortable fit, and I really liked it. And it, I think it had a slightly dipped or curved hem. Anyway, um, so that's that. So... Technically, I'm one t-shirt down and I need to get on and sort of that, but I've got enough things to do. And I think that's really it in terms of sewing. I did get the fabric from a lady in McElroy fabric that, I can't think what it's called, something garden. I think I mentioned it. I'll just reach for it. Now, just because I'm me and because I'm quite finicky about colours and um, depth of colour and contrast of colour and vibrancy, you will probably think I'm insane if I say to you, this is a bit dull for me. Because this is a bit dull for me. So... Although I'm, I'm not making any... I'm not... Um, it's not a fault about it. It's just a disappointment to me when it arrived and it wasn't as clearly vibrant as I like. And I will make something really nice out of it. And um, But I don't know if you'd understand what I mean. Even that kind of, that kind of green is a bit kind of... a bit murky. And while it's... And also I have my oranges and green because I don't like oranges and blue. But orange with green is even worse. But never mind, I knew there was orange there. I knew there was green there before I sent for it. It is a really lovely fabric and I did wash it the day before yesterday and I have pressed it. And it is ready for some sort of action. But I don't know whether I may leave it until more like autumn time even though it is, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's something like a cotton lawn, viscosy kind of, um, I don't know. It, <laughs> I can't remember and I'm not looking it up. Um, I'm just getting more and more hot because of the lights. So I felt much better since yesterday. Um, I decided I had things going on this week that I was I had a little gap where I could put a colour on my hair. Now obviously, as you can see, I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um but once I started with it last night, I got in a really big mess because I do it in the bathroom and I have a metal little stand mirror and the sun was shining on the on the on the metal and blinding me and then where it was hitting the window 
it was <laughs> and I couldn't see what I was doing it was a right mess and then I was panicking like because when you've got something this color that you're adding to your graying kind of faded ginger gray hair you need it kind of re relatively even and I thought oh, it's going to be so patchy but you know it's about the best one I've done um, and I, I was like trying to get back to doing the partings and I was like I can't see I don't know what I'm doing and yes anyway I'm very pleased with it it's bonkers absolutely bonkers bright um, auburn I'm going to call it but it's quite orange really isn't it? Um, but it's fine within three days it'll settle down it just washes straight out my hair doesn't hold it very long um, my friend who is a hairdresser she's brought all sorts of concoctions that are officially kind of hair dyeing products and um, and she gets so frustrated because they don't stay on <laughs> and uh, yes so I resort to a box to, to help her out then she doesn't have to be so frustrated and I just like the control of knowing I can do it when I can do it rather than when she's available so although she's lovely and it's very helpful and it doesn't make my arms ache when I <laughs> when she does it yeah so that's that really um, and I just I just feel um, I'm watching different different people on YouTube and finding lots of different types of uh, crafting and sewing and dressmaking uh, videos that I'm really enjoying um, and because I'm not someone who likes to follow trends or if someone else has got the same fabric as me or I, I just if there's a pattern launch and it's a main indie pattern person I'm not interested in making it unless that is the dress that I have been looking for all my life or a blouse or whatever it is I don't like I, I can't do the jumping on the bandwagon thing like seven people have made this and, and now 19 people have made this I'm not interested because um, I don't want to be one of those people oh gosh this is sticking to me who has also made that I just like my individuality and if my individuality um, you know if 17 people tomorrow have made the take the chance dress I won't bother about that and I won't not make it I wouldn't have not made it if I hadn't really wanted to try it but I don't do it just because there's a pattern out I'm not saying anyone else does I'm just saying it's not the way I roll <laughs> really so um, if I spot something someone's made and I really like it then I'll have a look at the pattern but I have got a lot of patterns and I thought I think last time I was I made a video I thought I could go through some of my patterns with you but they're not of relevance to me unless I spot the fabric that I need for them. Um, I'm just going to check if this is videoing, which I always do about part way through to find out it wasn't. Okay, so I think I'm going to sign off there. I'm not quite sure how long I've been on, um, but I, I found it really, really useful in doing a video about this and it was all wrong. I was really down here and I was showing how baggy it was and it was baggy and then I was saying but the bust is a really good fit but you couldn't see my bust and I don't know if that'll be the case now either <laughs> so um yeah but in in just reflecting on it on what I might do and what I wouldn't do and what I would settle for just for the video it really made me think afterwards why would I settle for that why do I not want it as absolutely as good as I want it so that's why I took the bag off and also in the week I had put I'd already put the sleeves in and they had a, um, a fancy pleat thing here and then I just didn't like how they were flat coming down flat so the the puff of the sleeve kind of came down there 
and I didn't like that. I like my shoulders, I like the sleeve to have a lift off at the end of my shoulders. And so I swapped, well, I had to recut the sleeves. I, I didn't have much fabric left, but I managed to recut the sleeves um, into the sleeves from my, oh, I won't know its name now. I think it's McCall's. I used it last week. I wore a navy blue spotted dress in it, from it. And have I just left it on here? I have. It is the M6028. And because I talked about it last week, I thought, ah, there is a sleeve. That, that long sleeve, which is what I've recut to this. Now, I could, I could have still, sorry, still put some elastic in, but I didn't want to. I could still put a, a little pleat in at the bottom, but I didn't want to. I just want some kind of little bit of flow. And I'm, I'm now working out what will I use to make the next one of these, because I really want some more. And I've given it some thought, and I think, although the collars are completely different, you know, but because it's boxy, I know where there are spaces where there is ease to be able to put a couple of waist darts and a couple of back darts in. And it's reminding me now, I think it's called the Lillian blouse from just so over it, so over it London, yes. So I think, because they can, you can have that, I think it's that one, you can have it boxy or you can have it darted and fitted. So I'm thinking, I'm just going to look at this, uh, look, uh, look at this pattern, the N6707, as a one to play about with in terms of if I want a boxy fit, I can have a box, boxy fit. I think I will stay with the 16 because I like this. Um, I did a low bust adjustment, but I like the bust fit on it. Um, I've still got some back issues at the top and that would be remedied if I made either a 14 or a 12. But then I've got to do the maths really about, well, the measurements, excuse me, for if I do a 12 back, and a 16 front, I have to work out how much I take off the collar. Excuse me, I've just got, starting with hiccups, I think that's what it is. And I'm kind of like, no. Right, so um, yes, I hope you have a brilliant week. I mean, we're coming to the end of July, or at the end of June. It's not far off July already. <laughs> and I don't really, I don't know what happened to April. So I don't know how you're doing. I hope you're doing well. I hope if you've managed to stay with me, uh, if you could give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you'd leave, leave me a comment, I will get better at getting back to people. Um, but I really enjoy having comments. Thanks ever so much. It just is really lovely that you're even watching and my views have gone up and I've got something like 780 something subscribers. So thank you for that. I'm not in a race about them. I'm not after doing anything when I get so many or, you know, I haven't got a, I'm not aiming for anything. I'm just like delighted when I see someone else has subscribed. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. And yeah, so I think I shall go and <laughs> open all the windows and well, some days it's open all the windows, some days it's still kind of like, oh my God, get everything. Get your, well, not exactly get your heating on, but where's my cardi? All right then. Lots of love. Have a good sewing week if you possibly can. And warmth and joy to you. Okay, bye. Susan signing off from Friday Sews number 12. Have a good summer if you can. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.